all seniors have losses, but it's loss of sight, loss of spouse, loss of hearing, loss of their independence. But if they're still holding on to those old values, those old things, they'll never be able to get on with a new life. And it might be much better than they ever thought. Yeah. And I think that's so important to keep your eyes open for the future that's going to be there. We must be willing to let go of the life we planned before we begin the life that is waiting for us. And that, I like that word, empowerment. And that's what CNIB has given me the tools so that I can empower it. And here I am, totally blind for 20 years. I'm living in this big house, basement upstairs, backyard swimming pool. Who's looking after it? The blind lady. To see the fear I had of living behind that closed door in the institution. And here I am. Yeah. But I doesn't that speak for the services I've given to seniors? and especially the blind. Our closest friends that we've been friends for 12 years, his wife became, she had to be entered into a nursing home for Alzheimer's. He's totally blind, he's been blind for about 10 years longer than me. And he moved in with his son. After he was there for two months, he was here. He says, how could you stay here like this? And I said, Bob set up my appliances, they're all marked, CNIB's got the stuff done for me. He said, if you can do it, I'm doing it. And he moved back home, he called a rehab teacher and said, if you meet me at the house, and this is a guy who's married 55 years. He's never done a load of washing in his life. He doesn't even know how to turn on a stove. By the end of that week, two weeks, he said, Bob's got the fridge on, or the fridge, like the spread, the wash machine. He knew where to put the load in. And he's doing his own laundry. He's doing his own cooking. He bought a crock pot, had markings on it. But he thought he was going to move on, live with the sons for the rest of his life. That's the good thing about CNIB is, again, they come to our home. If they said we'll, we'll be to the White Cane Center and teach computer lessons, how would I get there? I don't drive. The blind don't qualify for the caravan service. If I took a taxi, they let me off on the street in front. I can't get in the building. So CNIB comes to my home where I know where I am and it's accessible for me, my house. And, and you know, I'm very grateful for the Meals on Wheels. I really am. If I don't have to cook a meal, I'm, I'm pleased. But when the meals they provide, are really exceptional. Really, the, when I show my kids, you know, they, they say, you get all that? Well, somebody told us about it, and we said we want to try it, because I never cooked before. I couldn't cook a potato before. Mm -hmm. And now I'm doing all the cooking, so they give me a nice break. He's right? a good cook. Leo's connected to a large organization. They are. Did you my stuff? very first homemaker was Leo, and she's still my best friend 34 years later. Oh, really? Oh. Isn't that? So yeah. Leo has wonderful staff, very caring. And the meal is great, nice and hot. The soup is hot. Everything's good. Yeah. I've been cooking for 58 years, you know, and sometimes it's nice to have somebody else do it for me. And I'm not always in the best of health. I'm going in for knee surgery eventually. And Howard's going to cook. I'm a good eater, though. <laughs> Beautiful dessert. Great. Mm. Oh, it's exceptional. The volunteers are good and the meals are exceptional.